Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode five of Cell Bowl Season 2. We are here to talk about monocytes today, and joining us is the uh, infamous and wonderful Carlo Ledesma. Thank you for coming today. It's um, amazing. For anyone who doesn't know, the Cell Bowl is an NFL-style hematology competition where MLT and MLS program students compete against each other using the Cell Division, Cell Atlas, Cell Quiz portion of the app uh, to identify correctly 30 hematology cells within one minute. And you can have a perfect score that moves to time, or it's a certain amount of cells out of 30. So this year, we added a math, ca math calculation so that it's going to convert everything to times. So when you look at the scores, you're always going to see conversions into time if a program didn't receive a perfect score. So we are already in the playoffs we're talking about the playoffs today and from what we see today is going to indicate who's in the semifinals oh my gosh Man. so can, can you believe we're in week five already i i can't it is, it's just the, wild the competition is heating up <laughs> and the gameplay, we're just, the diffs. yeah it's all on fire and it's going crazy so we are thankful that everybody you know, Thanksgiving, uh, everybody's been with us and uh, we're so excited to continue. So with me today is my wonderful co-host, Aaron De Enzone Odegaard. Woo! <laughs> Thank you, Coach Gill, for having me. I'm pretty excited for the season. It's going to be very engulfing today. Yeah. <laughs> A little phagocytic, maybe, you know? <laughs> A little oh. macrophagy, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe some laciness and, you know. Brown glass stuff, yeah. So yeah. last year, um, we were talking about all normal maturation of adult um patients with the different cell lines of hematology, and Carlo uh was in episode two and he was helping us with the normal maturation of RVCs. And this year he switched it up and he's coming back for monocytes. Woo. Ooh, so you can do it <laughs> we all. So excited. Eric, can you introduce our um our guest, please? Guest from the bench. Uh, definitely. Um so luckily we've got Carlo Ledesma here. He is currently a DCLS student at KU. Hopefully finishing very soon. Very proud of him. Um, he's been an active ASCP volunteer. He's active with ASCLS. He's very active with um DNI and uh, you can see him speak he's done so many abstracts it's hard to keep track I don't he's know everywhere how he is everywhere I don't know. yeah <laughs> no yep. <laughs> yep. and he, he's a social media sensation as well on multiple platforms but uh, very smart guy so we're excited to have him here to give hey, him you're having me the only Selbo. <laughs> the only Carlo <laughs> yeah the only Carlo <laughs> So thank you so much for coming and joining us today. Um, I finally got to meet you in person twice this, this year. Yeah, it was so exciting. And um, as soon as I saw him, I was so excited. I, I just hugged <laughs> yeah. him like crazy. And he's like, oh, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I, I usually do the same too, so. <laughs> so. And we got to dance at the ASCP annual meeting too. Dancing. That's right. <laughs> yeah, we were everywhere together. It was so great. Um, so it's been wonderful meeting both of you in person uh, a couple of times now. And I feel like I work with you all all the time. <laughs> yes, so, every <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. So when you all start to get in on um, committees in ASCP or ASCLS or um, patient champions as uh, Aaron is showing you with his shirt today. Uh, you feel like you get to know these people and as if you're working together all the time, you may just see each other virtually most of the time, but it feels like you're already working in, you know, on site with them. So it's, yeah. it's really wonderful. I feel like both you guys are just like right down the hall or that we just went to lunch or something. So you do get to know some great people. So before we um, move into everything, um, I just want to show you the quick uh, lab swag here. We've got uh, what we're giving away today. No, oh. we're giving, this is what we gave away last week. Um, we're giving away the shirt today. 
Uh, just to let you all know, I was a little behind <laughs> with the prizes because I had a uh, uh, concussion and was just trying to make it through. Um, but I'm catching up. The television stuff has not gone out in the mail yet, um, but it will soon. And everybody that's been getting uh, medical lab lady gill swag, it's they're all ordered now and they should be delivered to you soon. So we are approaching the holidays. That's why we've got this background going. Um, we've got Mary Lab Miss and two different versions. Oh my gosh. So um, you can get them in all different kinds of things, but I just thought I'd put that out there so you all know. All uh, right. I'll be I'll be buying mine now. It's gotta gotta stay warm in Florida. It's it's uh, sixty something degrees today. Oh, stop it! <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday in Maryland, it was almost eighty degrees. It was crazy. It snowed last night here. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's wild. I was I was in a gown actually yesterday because I had a um, cousin's 40th birthday party and, you know, I was thinking it was an adult party. Um, so we went to a ballroom at the hotel. So I, you know, was dressed in this sleeveless uh, gown and I could not believe <laughs> I said this feels wrong. <laughs> It's it's almost 80 degrees and it's in the middle of November. The leaves are going away and I feel weird. <laughs> wearing no <laughs> <That's in Mexico. laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was in oh. a t-shirt and flip-flops yesterday. Oh, it's 29 yeah. degrees this morning. <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <Girl>. <laughs> wow. It's 49 over here in Maryland. We flip-flopped from almost 80 to 49 today. This is this is insane. So yeah, we've got the fire going and we're all trying to stay warm and cozy. <laughs> so let's go ahead and um, get started with our cell bowling. Woo! Right. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Everything's in the way. This is always a problem now. All right, so here we've got uh, more uh, Medical Lab Lady Gill swag in the Medical Lab Lady Gill store, commercial, Ooh, commercial. Nice. Um, <laughs> so this is our thing for this cell bowl season is the monocyte, hey, hey, for today, uh, chasing the Perfect target timing. cell. <laughs> Carlo, I feel like this is you all over because, uh, yep. you know, the red cells from last Chase year in mono. So, um, and this is for you today, uh, Aaron, uh, this is the QC wizard <laughs> sweatshirt on the front. It says QC wizard. And on the back, it says you shall not pass. And this is the, <laughs> uh, Levy Jennings chart here that talks about different situations that include the West Guard rules of how QC may not pass. <laughs> Very right. nice. Yes. I'm going to be purchasing that for all my quality site visits. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I just feel, look at the sweatshirt. <laughs> I want to get this because yeah. when um I teach this part in class, I want to just turn around and be at the board and them to get it while I'm still writing and we're working on it. So yeah, I try to I try to help. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Visuals. All right. So we're gonna introduce some programs today. And most of them are in the east because um, the West was taken care of um, our first or in second episode, I think, uh, because of uh, there weren't as many programs out there participating. Um, it was more than last year, I think, or maybe equal. Um, but uh, I think next year, what we're going to do is uh, put together both the Midwest and the West so that we get more of a representation because uh, there's not as many programs out in the West that there are in the East. So it's been a little bit unfair in regard to uh, representation. And, um, you know, I want everybody to, to be a part of the uh, event. So I think that's what we're going to do. So maybe like West of the Mississippi is all going to be West and then uh, east on the other side. Um, yeah. It's cool. very lopsided and it, it keeps continuing to be very lopsided. It's east heavy with programs and not as much with um, Midwest and West. Midwest has more. Um, so I think I think that's a really good idea. Yeah, so we'll, we'll find fun ways to break out the divisions and 
Oh I yeah, agree. you've already got them named. So yeah. <laughs> All we're... right. Um. So we are starting off in North Carolina. Carlo, would you like to start us off with the program? So we, we oh, Central Piedmont Community College. Yeah, it's uh, coming up. It's all animated. <laughs> so here we've got uh, their description and I'm going to zoom in and then everything's going to be there. All right. So, so they've got a really big program. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'm going to read it. Oh, wow. Uh, North Carolina Central Piedmont Community College. It's an MLT program, two-year full-time associate degree program with an option of a three-year part-time route. Students are on campus the first year of the program for lectures and lab activities. Second year of the program consists of students at clinical rotations for three days each week with additional lectures and labs. Graduates from Central Piedmont Community College are highly sought after by employers in the program has an average, average of 100% AACP certification rate for the past three years. Awesome. Ooh, excellent wow. Program. Oh, wow. <laughs> Way to go. So if you all are interested in going there, you're in North Carolina, we've got the website right here. Go check them out. They're doing awesome things. And then their neighbors are coming in um, as well. We've got wow. some... Great representation here of North Carolina. So we're zooming in right there for a second. Uh, yeah, I love that graphic. That's really cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Carlo. <laughs> Next is Southeastern Community College. It's another MLT program. Um, and it's to uh, the program's goal is to prepare individuals to perform clinical laboratory procedures to aid in treatment and diagnosis of diseases. Program, if you're interested, consists of four semesters of online didactic and campus lab study, followed by one semester of clinical practice at one of their affiliate hospitals. The program also has a 100% uh, pass rate for the ASCP and a 100% employment rate. And one of the things that they're proud of is they're one hour from the beach. <laughs> Hey, that's a nice thing. I'm about 20 minutes away. <laughs> so that's crazy because where I put their um where I put their arrow <laughs> doesn't indicate that, but that's not exactly where they are. <laughs> so they're probably over here somewhere. Um <laughs> so sorry about that. And there is their website. So if you want to hit the beach and also get a great education and be sought after by employers, head on over to Southeastern Community College. They are wonderful and beachy. <laughs> okay, so we've got uh, North Carolina, North Carolina. Let's see where we're headed now. Oh bum, my gosh, bum, North Carolina. Bum, woo. <laughs> Apparently it's a great state. It is. So we went to Central Piedmont. Now we're in Western Piedmont <laughs> Community College. I think they might be near each other. <laughs> Maybe in the same county? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. Could be. So they've got the mountains. They're not anywhere near the beach. They're they're in the Appalachians, I think. Looks pretty, though. Yeah. All right, Carlo, if you want to round us out for North Carolina. So from we at Central Piedmont, now we're Western Piedmont Community College. It's another MLT program. That if you're interested, we'll prepare you to work in medical labs, performing clinical laboratory testing in chemistry, hematology, microbiology, and immunohematology. And you'll be a part of the team that provides health maintenance, diagnosis, and treatment of diseases to patients. Um, topics covered in the MLT program are mathematical and scientific concepts related to specimen collection, lab testi laboratory testing and procedures, quality assurance and reporting, recording and interpreting findings from tests involving tissues, blood, and body fluids. Graduates of the program will be eligible to take the ASCP uh, MLT examinations. So it looks like they are not, not from the beach, but hey, if you're in the mountains, go for it. <laughs> Got a place to go. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> Beautiful area. Well, thank you. And if you want to be in a mountainous region and or you already live out there, head on over to Western Piedmont Community College. 
Their website is right there. You can always Google and just Google the name. Um, and we also have these highlights available on the Sellable website. So you can just type in Sellable and the first um, the first link that comes up is our sellable website. So take a look over there and you can find all of this stuff from every single week. All right. So now we are back in the East. Aaron, if you want to take us to New Jersey. Oh, you New know, Jersey. Okay. Yeah, New Jersey. We're heading up New Jersey. All right. Here we okay. are. Okay. So Centenary University. Their uh, lab science program is small and intimate in the Northwest of New Jersey. So in the Northeast, but the Northwest part of New Jersey, allowing students to receive individualized training to participate in practical laboratory experiences. So it sounds like it's a great, smaller, more intimate program. So take and advantage look, of this. Yeah. And look at those smiling faces. So. Yeah. It looks like best friends forever now. <laughs> so some good stuff must be happening there. Yeah. If you want to, if you want to make really good friends and have a good time in Cell Bowl, <laughs> head on over to uh, cent Centenary, centenary. I, yep. I can't say it correctly, uh, yeah. University, and they've got a really great program there, and there is their website. So We're follow gonna, the link. Yeah, follow the link. <laughs> Um, we are heading back to New Jersey. I want to take this one because my friend is the program director. <laughs> oh, okay. So um, um, Professor Lisa Shave is in charge of the Mercer County Community College here. And as you all know, in all of the Cell Bowl episodes, you know, the first season, we were battling it out with them. <laughs> and um, we... <laughs> We kind of landed on top in, in that regard, but this year they we have switched it up and they are beating our pants off <laughs> in this season and they're doing amazing. And look at them, they're mocking me. They're yeah, like, even in their photo, one. they're like, number one. <laughs> they have a beautiful lab. They've got a great team and a great program director and faculty. Really wonderful things happening over there. So, uh, the Medical Laboratory Technician Program or Technology Program at Mercer County Community College prepares graduates to enter the clinical laboratory field, which combines the exciting yet challenging world of science and medicine. Just like that. We are the science behind the medicine. Just thought I'd put that out there. Um, our uh, Their program consists of two phases. There's a pre-professional first year phase where general education courses are completed and a professional phase in the second year of the program where the MLT courses are offered. That sounds very similar to your uh, your situation, Carlo. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about that off camera. Um, all right, students can complete the professional phase in the traditional format in a face-to-face -face lecture or through hybrid track, which is um, for those who need extra flexibility. So hybrid means that you know there's an online component. After successfully passing their five didactic courses and clinical experience at an affiliated clinical uh, hospital, students will graduate with an associate's degree. Graduates are eligible to sit for the national certification exams and apply for licenses if they're going to a state or are in a state that requires a license. And there's a whole list of them that you can find on the ASCP website. And I think it's on ASCLS as well, isn't it? Um, where you can find that. So sometimes a licensure uh, situation may include the requirement of taking a licensure exam made by the state. Other times it's that you're filling out paperwork that already shows that you have a uh, certification and that they give you a license because they know that you have quality education and background. So yeah. it really depends on the site. Does anybody have anything they want to say about that? Oh, um, yeah. so Florida used to be um, where you you have to go and take a state test, but now it's you uh, You submit your uh, CEUs, your board of certification scores and um, uh, educational transcripts. So then for your first set along with HIV and laws and rules, and then each two years you have to renew and submit continuing education credits. So one thing uh, for me, one thing I've learned is some states do, uh, even if you're a NACLS accredited program, they need to know or they need to, they still need to have your um, educational um, transcripts reviewed. 
especially with the state of New York. Um, and I think for, as far as exams, California is the only one that has exam, but it's an online exam or California laws governing laboratory science. So um, yeah, but, but, but for the most part, I think as long as you're ASCP certified, it, it transfers to most licensure states. Yeah, I'd agree with that. We've had uh, several graduates who don't stay in the state because of whatever reason. As I've said before, we serve a lot of military families and uh, they have gone to these different licensure states. Um, so it's really good before if you're in a state that doesn't have it and you're moving to one that does look into it ahead of time. <laughs> Make sure you're prepared. <laughs> Uh, so that way, you know what you're getting into and how best to approach that scenario and the um, officials, you know, whether it's your school or institution um, from where you're coming from can help you with where you're going to in order to make sure you meet all those requirements. So mm -hmm. very, very cool. And there is their uh, website, very short and sweet. Some of us are our websites are really, really long. Mine's really long. This one's really long. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> <laughs> All go. right. So we are back to New Jersey. And um, these folks have been really busy on Twitter and social media this year. They are really flying their um their community college flag of excitement for the Cell Bowl. So we're really happy to have them. And Aaron, if you wanna, if you wanna take them, the, the face, it's, it's gonna be crazy in this recording because I've been moving our faces all over the place. They've been going horizontal, right. vertical. We don't even know. I can't get. Well, this is the cell ball. We got to keep people on their toes. We do. When, it's when you're different, you gotta be prepared for any type of cell. <laughs> That's right. So, yep. So, uh, Rattan. Valley um, Community College. It's a associate's program at um, Rattan Valley Community College. It provides students with a foundation in clinical laboratory science required to enter the healthcare field as medical laboratory technicians, so lab professionals. Um, it prepares students to be functionally effective as members of the laboratory care team. And through a combination of classroom work, laboratory, clinical experiences in the key areas like microbiology, clinical chemistry, hematology, meaning hematology or analysis. So all the, all the great areas like microbiology. Um, students will learn how to perform Sorry. these diagnostic laboratories tests that are used to pre for pre disease prevention, diagnosis and treatment. So these guys are gonna be making a difference in their area, so. And if you want to learn more about them and you're in their area, Tiffany's going to show us the amazing website we can go to. Right there. Yeah. Yep. So you got take food a... on microbiology. I don't know if you noticed. It. We were no, having the, too much fun. The haters got to hate. <laughs> the entire lab's amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you got to shake it off. Shake it off. But, <laughs> but this is a great program. So if you're in the area, find them and uh, join their team. All right, go Raritan, woo! All right, so we are heading back over to the east in a neighboring state of Pennsylvania. I went up to school for my bachelor's up in Pennsylvania, um, but it was not to the school. I'm sure it is very wonderful though. And judging from what you're gonna hear, you probably will agree. All right, Carlo, we're gonna get back to you. Okay, uh, this is the AHN St. Vincent School of Medical Laboratory Science. It's a hospital-based program located in Erie, Pennsylvania, that has been educating medical laboratory scientists since 1946. Wow. Uh, they accept 12 students per year uh, into the one-year uh, hospital-based program, and their faculty consists of pathologists, supervisors, and medical laboratory scientists. And they are affiliated with several colleges and universities in Pennsylvania, Ohio, and New York. Over the last several years, 100% of their students have found employment after graduation. So check them out, um, AHN St. Vincent School of Medical Laboratory Science in Erie, Pennsylvania. Ooh, and it looks like they've got um, 
their uh, <laughs> uniform makes them look like red cells. So they are very happy little red cells and uh, really excited to go to work. So great job. Thank you for yeah, helping us get a better- Oxygenating the profession. So. Yeah. Representing the profession. I was very impressed with this picture too, because we've got a lot of uh, great smiling faces. And this is on, um, this might even be on their social media pages, the Guthrie RPH Medical Laboratory Science Program. So okay. this is their graduating class of 2023 upcoming. I did not put their names on here. So if any of you are not 18 or over, this was given to me with permission by your faculty member. I have to say that for legal reasons. All right. So we are back in Pennsylvania. Woo! All right. <laughs> um, so the Guthrie Robert Packer Hospital Medical Laboratory Science Program is a hospital-based program located in suburban Sayer, Pennsylvania. Their program combines a high caliber of education um, with state-of-the-art laboratory spaces to give the student an optimal learning experience. Clinical rotations cover all of the core areas of the medical laboratory and also explore many of their niches. So if you are into microbiology, but you like special micro, like mycology, parasitology, or virology, you can really investigate that option here. And uh, you might end up listening to Aaron DeEnzone Odegaard and some of his CE courses or anything like that to help you with preparing to continue your continuing education parts of your uh, certification. So way to go, Guthrie RPH Medical Laboratory Science Program. Thank you for supporting medical laboratory science at a hospital institution. So we've gotten two of those so far. Um, yeah. I don't know if that's a whole thing across Pennsylvania. We're going to find out. So we are back in Pennsylvania. No, nope. Penn State University. Don't think it's hospital-based. Yep. No. Yeah, look at them. This is a really cool picture. Uh, they've got, they're all huddled around their mascot here. All right, Aaron, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one. This, this oh, works up my uh, family's from the Philadelphia area and, uh, Granddad was a huge Penn State fan, so we always had Penn State stuff. Woo woo! Uh, I get to take it, take it old school. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Penn State University, their medical laboratory technology program at, at Penn State Health is a two-year program designed to provide the necessary and general technical training for medical laboratory personnel. So, courses of study include theoretical background necessary to perform laboratory tests, followed by a one-year intensive clinical experience at one of their many clinical affiliates. Uh, the program strives to play, prepare graduates to provide accurate and timely test results and demonstrates the humanism and professionalism required in the medical field. So just like our patient champions program, we got to, they keep it patient focused, which is a great thing to do. So this is an amazing program. So check out Penn State, wonderful website. Absolutely. Yeah. They're in Hazleton, this group is. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to school right outside of Philadelphia um, for my bachelor's. And uh, it's really great that we've got these types of programs. I was pre-med. I was pre -med. I didn't do an MLS program until after. So I was a four plus one. Um, but it's really great that we have all these options. I did a one year hospital program like these ones over here. Yeah. So if you have already gotten your bachelor's degree and it's either pre-med or physical science and you, want, you decided you want to go into the lab uh, like I did, uh, you can find one of these one-year hospital-based programs. They're a really great option and uh, they help you to become ready and eligible to sit for the ASCP certification yeah. exam. I did the same thing you did, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. It was a four plus one. I was a bio major, didn't know what I was going to do, and then uh, got into a hospital-based program for a year. Oh yeah. Carlo, I think you're similar, aren't you? I was a two plus two um, okay. program, two plus two program. 
But um, I want to emphasize too that um, from the schools that we have mentioned here, um, you know, uh, one option is the hospital-based program, but there's also other schools that offer hybrid options um, or, or online formats. Um, depends on the type of learner you are. There's a lot of variety of programs available for you. Absolutely. So you are the epitome of the MLT going to the MLS. You know, mm -hmm. you're you're an embodiment of that. I wish that I had had that option because I probably would have taken it. Um, I didn't realize that what I love so much about medicine was in the laboratory because I wanted to be a physician. And then I realized, hey, everything I wanted to achieve out of being a physician, I found in the laboratory. So um, I probably wouldn't have benefited from going to a um MLT program first because I wasn't there yet in my headspace. I didn't really have somebody to tell me about that kind of thing, um, which is now me in my community. I'm I'm the only one in Southern Maryland. So I get those questions all the time. And I wish current me was there for past me <laughs> to help me get to hey, this. Point. Yeah. It got, it got you to, yeah. It was it's like all about this. the journey. <laughs> Uh, about the journey you have to yes. kind of so it's really good because um, now we're all out there. We have our experiences and we are able to provide that um, mentorship and advice to anyone who's been in our situation. And, um, you know, Aaron and I have very similar <laughs> situation because yes. <laughs> he was very into music and everything too and um yeah I did the same kind of thing but it was yeah. never a major it was just yeah that no, so. was I think Spanish music environmental biology then <laughs> biology the little neuro then MLS so <laughs> I think uh for uh, with all the campaigning of our professional organizations and, you know, the pandemic highlighting the profession uh, mm -hmm. for my MLT program, I've noticed a lot of a lot more first time college degree uh, students and mm -hmm. not just the previous uh, bachelor's degrees coming back to an MLT. Mm -hmm. um, but now we're seeing more first generation first degree um, students. So That's great. Yeah. promoting the profession. Yeah, that <laughs> yes. is really, really good. Um, the the area that we serve we have several different counties that we serve a lot of them are first time college students in their entire families for generations so that's really exciting um i i get the i get how that feels that's really really good that we're getting all the different kinds of um students coming in and yep. it's a great field all right so i think Aaron might want to take this one. Yes, I do. <laughs> I think going to steal this one from me. I love her. <laughs> yeah, he was about to jump out of his skin. So <laughs> I see. Um, go ahead and uh, take Teresa's. <laughs> okay. So the Rhode Island Hospital and Lady of Finvent Hospital MLS program is a hospital-based program located in the state of Rhode Island and is affiliated with three institutions um, statewide. So Rhode Island College, so Regina University and the University of Rhode Island. So these students participate in a 11th month internship, which occurs entirely at the two hospitals, Rhode Island Hospital and Our Lady of Benham Hospital, both didactic lectures and clinical rotation experiences occur during this 11 month period where students become well prepared to meet the rigor and excitement of joining the medical laboratory community after graduation. Uh, she, Teresa has a amazing program and has even told me at points that she's her biggest class was 20 students at a hospital based program for one year. So she's um, I've gotten to learn more about how she, she sets up her labs and um, it's a it's a great program. So if you're in the area, take advantage. You'll learn a lot of amazing things. And the website is here. And you already know the program director is amazing. So you'll learn lots of great stuff. I have to say, yeah, she, there is a little <laughs> bit of biasness there. She's a micro person. <laughs> that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I finally got to meet her in person and she's like, wow, I'm such a fan. And I was like, are you kidding? I'm a big fan of yours. And she's like, what? That was so cool. <laughs> 
So we got to hang out a little bit at the annual meeting uh, in September. So she's an awesome person, really great yeah. educator. Um, oh. They are excited to come back in full, for, full force next year. Um, yeah. They pulled out uh, during the event, but I've kept, you know, all the programs that have pulled out, I've kept them in. So when yeah. you see the, the statistics, you're not like, this doesn't make any sense. Cause there's not that many programs. So I just yeah. left them all in there. Yeah. Um, so, sometimes on the cell bowl field, you know, you have to, you have to know when to leave the field sometimes if there's injuries or just timing. So <laughs> gotta know yeah. when to, you can diff. It's or, or when they're uh, faculty ties. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, We've it been eaten up all semester. You can't, you can't <laughs> anticipate these things. Yeah, it is really hard. We this have to, have to move out like hemotactus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So Carlo wants to jump in back to Pennsylvania, um, going to Williamsport. Okay. This is the UPMC Williamsport MLS program. Um, 12 month program designed to be completed at the fourth year of a baccalaureate program or post baccalaureate. Uh, program has had a 100% graduation rate, certification exam pass rate, 100% um, employment rate uh, over the last seven years. Students benefit from one-on-one -on -one instruction in the lab of a level two trauma center from day one. There's no student lab. The coursework includes didactic classroom instruction with the remainder of each day in the clinical lab. Upon completion of the clinical year, students are eligible to sit for the ASCP BOC exam and students uh, graduating from the program are well prepared to work in a clinical or technical laboratory. UPMC Williamsport MLS program. Go Pennsylvania. Oh yeah, I was looking for it. Where is it? North Central PA, there you go. It's on the website. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nice work. All right, so it, Pennsylvania was all covered today. If you are in Pennsylvania, uh, head on over to these programs. If you are in New Jersey, head on over to the programs we highlighted. And Rhode Island, go for it. They are an awesome program too. All right, we are heading now down to Tennessee. This is the only Tennessee program that uh, competed this year. And I don't remember if they competed last year. Um, they might have been one of the couple. There were a couple that competed last year. All right, here we are. So I guess I'll take this one. Um, so this is Columbia State Community College, and they were founded in 1966 and were the first community college established in Tennessee. Way to go. It's really awesome. It serves over nine middle Tennessee counties five uh, and five area locations. Students attend clinical rotations in a wide range of laboratory settings, such as reference labs, state of uh, Tennessee's microbiology, uh, lab located in Nashville, Aaron, um, medical centers, city nice. and county hospitals. They do it all. The main campus is located in um, Maury County, just south of Nashville. Students can participate in a wide variety of community colleges experiences, such as overseas travels uh, for enrichment, research, and health-related activities. On and near campus opportunities include Be The Match, which Carlo is a big champion of as well. I know. Um, so we'll talk about that in just a minute, but they're really great to be paired with blood drives. So if you're um, if your program does blood drives like mine, it is a really great uh, thing to also include Be The Match with those blood drives. And we'll talk about why in just a second. Um, uh, Duck River Cleanup and Area Food Drives are other things that they do. Their program is five semesters in total with the first two as prerequisites and the last three covering core classes. Uh, during semesters four and five, students attend campus one day a week, and clinical sites offer um, students employment opportunities while they're in the program. Um, I think that's very common because we are in such a manpower shortage and need of clinical laboratorians that um, a lot of students end up with jobs before they get out. But it's really great um, and uh, definitely a wonderful 
thing that we have those jobs available. Uh, okay. We serve, tradi they serve traditional and non-traditional, um, many working to establish a second career and graduates are in high demand, as we said, but with competitive pay and sign-on bonuses. What were you going to say, Aaron? <laughs> I was gonna, this is an amazing program. Um, when they said Duck River cleanup, I was like, why are those ducks so messy? And then I was like, wait, the river is <laughs> gone. <laughs> <laughs> the duck river <laughs> the duck river not those messy ducks <laughs> um birds do poop a lot and they they especially do if they feel threatened Sorry, they... not to draw focus from this amazing <laughs> program but yeah that, but yeah <laughs> i personally love ducks um, Me too. um Be them yeah all the time. so carlo can you tell us a little about about be the match oh be the match uh be the match program is uh it's affiliated with the National Marrow Donor Program, and it's uh, it's a program that helps uh, people who need bo life saving bone marrows pair with uh, donors that are eligible or, or a match for them. It's it's very very important uh, to to be able to be signing up for the Be the Match program because there are a lot of diseases, hematologic diseases, not just leukemia um, uh, or or other blood diseases. Um, there are a lot of um, blood uh, blood diseases, like sickle cell anemia could be saved by um, bone marrow transplant. So um, if you aren't able, if you aren't able to sign up yet, or if you're not signed up yet, make sure to check Be The Match because every bone marrow counts and you're in the registry. Um, and all of those, um, uh, all of those expenses related to the marrow donor uh, donation will be paid for by be the match so you could be wow. the one that will save someone's life yep so if you've ever heard of stem cell uh transplants or bone marrow transplants be the match is the way to go um they are looking at not just the stuff that you're learning in blood banking and hematology they're looking at hla matching other ones that you may not necessarily do in clinical rotations um, but just because your blood type is the same doesn't mean that um, you have other um, matching antigens. So that's why Be The Match is so important. You hear all these rare cases of this little girl has um, this type of um, need and not many people would match her antigens. And this happens like across the world. And if you enter Be The Match, they help out. Um, if you are a program director or a faculty member, they will um, give your program money if you are using um, or if you're hosting drives and stuff with Be The Match and allow them to come in and educate uh, at your facility. And it happens within a semester. So if you're interested in even just getting more money for your program to help Be The Match and also help with other um, medical laboratory community events and things, um, definitely check them out. They'll send out a representative and they will um, they will help support your program as well as much as you help support them. So really great, wonderful opportunities there. Awesome. Yeah, thank you both. I wrote that down. I'm going to look into that. Yeah, it's it's a really good idea. I've been wanting um, to bring them in. Um, yeah, all you do is you give a mouth swab and that's sent off and they um, assess your cells that way. And uh, therefore you're in a registry. There is a cutoff age of when you're able to be a donor uh, because oh. they don't want to harm you. You know, as you get older, your bone marrow yeah. starts to change um, with the representation of cells in there. So it's not like a lifetime uh, donation, but uh, definitely worth doing. There's a window. Yeah, there is a window. But, um, it's not the same standard as, as a blood donation, as long as you're in overall general well-being or well health, mm -hmm. you're eligible to be a bone marrow donor. Yes. And they have such really amazing stories. The donors get to meet the recipients um, later on. Oh, it's so heart wrenching and beautiful. I don't know if you've ever looked at any of those videos, but they're incredible. Um, I do have some videos that are in, I think our blood banking clinical rotation, um, 
uh, the Medical Lab Lady Guild Blood Bank uh, Virtual Rotation Playlist, and I think also in the hematology one. So check those out. Be the Matches on YouTube, and I've shared several of their videos, but they they just keep putting more out there so you get to learn about yeah. The video, got, the video got me to donate or to, to sign up as a donor. <laughs> it's, it, it's beautiful. It really, really is. And, you know, you really, the people that are, um, I've known that are blood donors, they really have a passion for it. And then you meet a blood, a be the match donor and they have a heart for it too you know it's all about helping one another and you could be the one person that helps save this person you've never met before it could be a three-year-old child um the person could be a 60 year old person it it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Um, we are looking into acute uh, leukemias uh, in this season of cell bowl. Um, but as Carlo was saying, there are other reasons of why someone may need uh, stem cells or bone marrow. Yeah. So, um, thank you all for donating. If you go out and donate, check them out. Uh, they're really amazing. And uh, you could you could be that person's lifeline. All right. So we are back in... Well, we are not back. We're in the South again. We've mm -hmm. gone to North Carolina. Now we're journeying to South Carolina, right below them. I have some graduates there um, that are doing some amazing things in the blood bank, no less. <laughs> um, so here we've got uh, McCloyd School of Medical Technology. They look like a really fun group. I really love this girl's shirt, just putting that out there. Um, so as one of three hospital-based medical laboratory science programs in South Carolina, they pride themselves on producing confident, competent medical laboratory scientists each year. So their faculty members are passionate, excuse me, to give back, just like we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. Um uh, to their alma mater as 85% of the staff graduated from their program. They've, um, their program, their program students attend uh, medical <laughs> laboratory sites. I'm messing up this last sentence. They're the program that students attend to become medical laboratory professionals, but leave with so much more. It's like the beautiful tagline that I completely butchered and I'm really sorry. <laughs> So um, they're doing wonderful things for South Carolina. Yeah. Um, come join these ladies and yeah. have a great time. And they've, their program director is pretty amazing too. Uh, April Orange runs their program. Um, she's uh, very passionate about the profession and um, about her students. So she's always willing to help out. So if you're there, check them out. Sorry, I had to... Shout out I, to April. I wish I would have seen your face. I didn't. I didn't see you do the same thing. Like, oh, let me take that one. I would have given you that one. That's okay. <laughs> I just want to say a little bit. Well, Aaron, we're gonna have you take us back to the same state here. We're going back to South Carolina at Tri County Technical College. There you go. Okay. So. Hanging around South Carolina, Tri County Technical College Medical Laboratory Technology Program uh, leads to great careers at hospitals, clinics, private labs, and even research departments. So this just goes to show in the laboratory profession, you can do anything you want. If you can go beyond the lab or stay in the lab, but you're impacting patients. So no matter your location, you do play an important part in detection, um, diagnosis, and treatment of Patients. So in the first year on campus, it's dedicated to MLT laboratory and so laboratory training on campus. And then the second year, uh, students attend a clinical rotation at many area hospitals where these students are offered jobs pretty much upon graduation, or in some cases, as we were all talking, even before they graduate, um, we're always trying to recruit our students right off the bat. 
Whoops, sorry about that. Bum, bum, bum. I wasn't trying to move us ahead. I just was clicking and then it caught up. Um, Moving us out west to Carlo. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. So what I wanted to note here is that the laboratory does have amazing options. You don't always end up staying where you first start. And a lot of people don't realize that laboratorians are who makes medicine at pharmaceutical companies. So there are... Um, medical chemists and medical microbiologists that make medicine at pharmaceutical companies. And then, you know, you reap the benefit from that. So you can do so many things. You can work for a government agency. You can work for um, a forensic agency. You could work for a pharmaceutical company. There are so many different things that you can do. You can even end up in education like all three of us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there are so many wonderful things you can do with your laboratory education. It doesn't stop where you started. It really is whatever you want. No, it to doesn't. Do. You could be a YouTuber, or a TikTok star, you know, you could do anything. <laughs> yeah. Fun fact about me, I, I thought I was going to be a microbiologist. Microbiology was my passion. And look, Ooh. I ended up hematology. <laughs> what? Yeah, man. And then, then you're going to be a DCLS pretty soon yeah. in clinical oh. practice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you need that look, Carlo, but you know, I think you're doing a great job. So yeah, yeah. you're in residency right now. Do you want to talk about that? So the DCLS residency is is interesting. It's it's not anything similar to um, our internship or, or the hospital based rotations. Um, what we do is uh, we we also learn in uh, with the medical doctors and the residents uh, and the pharmacists uh, doing rounds and also immerse with the laboratory and then tie that all information together, um, make recommendations on uh, evidence based. Um, evidence-based algorithms and see some quality improvement in the lab. So it's an overall, it's an, an overall immersion of what we have done the last two or three years in the DCLS program. Um, it's pretty interesting so far because here in, in the residency part, you really get to learn outside the lab and, and be the face of the laboratory mm -hmm. and, and be the, um, I guess, advocate for the laboratory. So that's that's a nice touch to it. So does that mean that a DCLS is a laboratory seat at the table in those diagnostic management teams? Uh, yes. Uh, well, there are, um, I guess, d different programs doing that. Like UTMB has done the uh, diagnostic management teams. Um, where where I'm at, um, there's there's just collaboration, or they have the committees that are spearheaded by um, by the lab. But but yes, it could it could be a possibility that. A DCLS could be one of the members of the yeah. diagnostic management team, um, and and it's good benefit for us laboratory. Yeah. Lab and it's it's a great collaboration with the pathologist too to have that extra. We need extra members of the team along with the pathologists and the rest of the team. So, it I'm very excited to see what you do. I like I like um, in where I'm a resident. Uh, the sync the synchrony between me as an experienced uh, laboratory professional with advanced or training to have an advanced degree and the pathologist with their medical training. Um, you know, like we're all collaborating to see improvements in the laboratory. So yeah, sounds like that, a great team. Yeah, it is an uh, integration within the lab, and then you know putting a face out there. So mm -hmm. absolutely. And um, there's a lot of worry, I think, that's out there and rumors about DCLS replacing um, pathologists, which is so not true. Um, mm -hmm. I like that you're you're putting out there the partnership between the two. We've got a lot of pathology. All pathologists seem to be overwhelmed with work and to have an extra team member to help with the, um, you know, the face of the lab and being that go-to person um, between the lab and the floor is really, really great, but absolutely does not replace uh, the no. pathologist whatsoever. So yeah. definitely yeah. a place in the lab for DCLS. A, a true laboratory care team. So absolutely. And it, reminds, care team. it reminds me of that to err is human publication. Yes. It's <laughs> not one person decision. It's an yeah. interprofessional or intercollaborative mm -hmm. decision. So it's, it's a nice um, addition to help pathologists. 
Yes, another arrow in our quiver, right, of the laboratory in order yes. to take down disease. All right. <laughs> so I think this one's for you there, Carlo. All right. It's the an, the MLS program at Wichita State University. Um, the MLS program prepares graduates to excel in a professional laboratory career by providing the tools and skills necessary to work in all departments of the clinical laboratory. The MLS students have full access to labs and facilities, working with their peers and gaining hands-on experiences, um, analyzing specimens. The program offers outstanding community support, experience during clinical rotation, and above average, uh, above national average certification scores, flexible application entry points. This is a program, it's a 17 month program, which includes 12 month didactic on campus, um, and five-month clinical practical phase. The clinical rotations are completed in a medical facility where students are supervised by a faculty member uh, called a preceptor. The preceptor will act as a student's mentor um, while on rotation. Students have the option of doing full-time or part-time um, uh, during their, uh, and students must be full-time during the clinical practicum semester. That's the Wichita State University. Woo! Go Kansas. Ooh. Ooh. Rock Chalk. Stay up. That's different. <laughs> all right. So thank you for letting us go through all of those program oh spotlights. Now we're getting into gameplay. Ooh. Okay. Are, are, are you ready? Am I ready to look? Are you ready to sell ball? Yes, I am. Ooh. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> going to be a blast. Woo. All right. So we, as you can see, um, have the this week's winners for the different pieces of lab swag. This is our international event where you have to beat Medical Lab Lady Gill's perfect score time. And they did. Oh, my gosh, did they? So <laughs> we've got um, the hematology hero. Did the dun, da, 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 hematology Making a, hero. a difference. Um, making a difference. Um, shirt here. Actually, that one's a different piece of lab swag. So don't confuse them, Aaron. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, Brianna, um, Wacker in Nebraska won the t-shirt. Congratulations, Brianna. Yay. Well done. Well done. Then we had Maria, uh, Oyen in Virginia, who's going to get this lovely cell, cell vision, uh, Rubik's cube. It's got all the different. That's really nice. Um, this is a manual way to practice all the things that you've been doing uh, virtually and online. <laughs> I could probably and, do both of them about the same speed. Oh my gosh! If you could do both of them at the same time, we need a we need a video of that, and Carlo will put it on TikTok. <laughs> Um, and then Christopher Anderson in Louisiana is going to get that wonderful Cellavision backpack as well. So congratulations on you all doing amazing, yeah, amazing, perfect scores. So if you have not received any lab swag yet, but you entered your perfect score, I want to caution you that you probably need to go back and make sure that you have your full address in the um, in the form, because I'd say about 60 to 80 percent of you did not fill out your entire address. I cannot send you something if you don't even tell me what state or zip code you are. You know, so I really need you to fill out an entire address in order for you to win. You all are doing sure. amazing stuff. I want to make sure that I reward you for that. So please, 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 we only have two more weeks for you to be able to read, uh, receive something. So please make sure that you're going in and um, making sure that your whole address is there. So each each entry that um, someone has done, everybody only gets one and it is editable, okay? So as long as the uh, form is still open, you can go in and edit your submission, okay? And that's what I'm asking you to do <laughs> yes. because I need to be able to send it to you. I've, I've picked 
other people um, already randomly, and they were not able to get a piece of lab swag yeah. because they didn't have their full address. So yeah. please, please, please make sure that you do that. Yeah, Coach Gill is very talented, but she's, she can't, uh, she's not a mind reader, so. No, I'm not, and I'm not stalking you. So, <laughs> you know, if you could help me out so I could just <laughs> send you gifts, that'd be great. <laughs> help me help you. <laughs> help me yeah, help you, please. With free last yeah, swag. <laughs> <laughs> it's a win-win, I swear. <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> um, you know. <laughs> It's, it's good stuff. So um, just to let you know, um, everybody that played in the global event has only been in the U.S. I haven't seen anybody outside the U.S. play yet. Take that for what you will. I think um, next season that's going to go away too, that it's just going to be the United States since we don't seem to have any playing um, or players outside. So we're going to be making changes. So, you know, if you want to keep it, you got to use it right? Um, we will still give away lab swag. That's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is we might just keep it as a national event since that's, yeah. those are the only people who are participating. Um, we're going to be shaking some stuff up. Make sure we yeah. rotate that, uh, the purple top. Yeah. We're reconstituting the whole blood here. Right. And we need to make sure that what you all actually want is what we do. So um, if you don't use it, you lose it. So make sure you're filling out those feedback surveys. Um, I already sent them out to your faculty member. If you haven't received them yet, please ask and they will be able to give it to you. Um, so in week four, we saw 10 out of 25 or the top 25 um, of the uh, stats were MLT programs and six of them, yeah, were in the top 15. So for all of you who are concerned that, you know, we are having two year uh, programs compete against four year programs, take it from the winners of last year who were an MLT program, it is possible. And um, yep. as Professor Darty said, a cell is a cell. <laughs> Cell is a cell. Yes, and they, you are able to do just as well um, as anybody else. And we have some really fun, exciting, hopefully a surprise um, later on in the season about um, you know doing the actual event, but we can't tell you that yet. So you got to stay tuned in these upcoming weeks. You know, you may see Carlo again. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, 15 of those top 25 were MLS programs. So we have a really great spread. You all are doing amazing and it's anybody's game, right? So here we have the top six of who competed in this week. So we're in week five, uh, this week out of the six that were, um, the six that are playing in the playoffs, which is the week five, um, this is how it shook out. Okay. So we had university of Connecticut was in first place with 21 and a half Yo, seconds. UConn. Wow. Yeah. I, I am really shocked here. So here is my challenge to you and Southeast community college and everybody else that's in, um, that's still playing. If you can make it in under 20 seconds, I will send you that backpack again, the hematology <laughs> backpack. Oh this um, is ridiculous. It's this crazy. Is insane. Yeah. So I made that challenge last year and, um, the MVP of the, uh, cell bowl winners actually received that backpack. So I'm putting it out there for you too. If any of you can make it in less than 20 seconds, you break the 20, I will give you that backpack. So include guests. <laughs> Maybe Carlo. I don't know. Yes. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Yes. Um, so, uh, in second place was Southeast community college in Nebraska with 23 and a half seconds. Um, this, everybody, um, in the top three was really close and everybody in the bottom three were really close too. And honestly, the whole spread is pretty close. Um, yeah. so we've got university of Cincinnati who has been, um, just going back and forth with the University of Connecticut and some others uh, throughout this season. It's been a real shakeup 
um, this entire, this entire season. Um, so yeah. University of Cincinnati in Ohio uh, made it in almost 24 and a half seconds. Then we've got University of California, Irvine, Department of Pathology and Laboratory Science, Laboratory Medicine, um, their CLS training program, uh, who may not be competing next year um, that I got an email from their program director um, because of where their hematology courses within the year doesn't really match up with the cell bowl, but they said they were so happy to play this year and they're in uh, fourth place here. And yeah, that's the, some strong play. Uh, yep. So the one time they came in and the one time they may stay, uh, yeah. they did some really great work they, there. So they left it all on the scope. They did. Yeah just under 28 seconds. And then that's followed by California State University, LA um, with 32.27 seconds. And then Montana State University, those MSU crystals uh, were out there um, <laughs> with 42.8 seconds. So well done. And here is our touchdown for the week. Um, Go! Back to University of Connecticut, because you can, you can do it. You can, you can, can do you? it. You can. Yes, you, you can. can. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. here's the breakdown of the top twenty-five, and since we just finished uh, week five, uh, the playoffs, mm -hmm. um, we are losing. Uh, three of our top six because we are going into the semifinals with the top three. All right. So in fourth place nationally, we've got University of California, the CLS training program at uh, California Irvine. And then we've got California State University in LA following them and MSU rounding out the top six. So the top three is up for grabs between the last three remaining. So yeah. remember, once you're in the playoffs, it's a clean slate. All right. Your only time that is going to last um, as your score is going to be the last one you do. Um, so yep. your four week average doesn't mean anything at this point. Now that told you what yeah. you were doing in regionals and got you to the playoffs yeah. but every other episode every other week that you're in it's basically like sudden death <laughs> it is it's um, every situation. individual diff yeah is, you're judged on your one diff yeah so no pressure yeah no pressure at all <laughs> it's for the patient though so you gotta gotta get it right every button matters every yeah. push mm -hmm. every <laughs> Absolutely. So um, next week, we're going to oh. figure out who is going into the Super Cell Bowl, the second Whoa. Super Cell Bowl ever. That will be the top two. So who's going to make it into the third place? I don't know. Check who it out. Who will get the Gilardi Trophy? Who will get the Gil Trophy? I don't know. Um, we're going to see that trophy in just a second here. But um, I think we're going to put a poll out online on Twitter yeah. and everything and see what you all think. Let's vote. Who do you think is going to make it into the super sell bowl? And then we'll follow that up with who do you think is going to win the next week? Who's so going to who slide in? Yeah. Who is playing in the semifinals? Well, we've got the yeah. uh, different sports teams right here. Oh crap. Sorry. That was who who was in the end. So you got me so excited. This is just, had, <laughs> I was I'm like, sorry. I need to know who's going on. <laughs> we have the Bobcats in third place, the Harry C Eagles, ha ha ha, Girl. Girl. in fifth place, and in fourth place we have the <laughs> Ant Eaters. I have no idea what sound the Ant Eater makes. So, like a slurping sound, maybe um, this with yeah, your yeah, long yeah, yeah. tongue. Yep. Yeah. So I'm numbing like, up the competition. I would like to publicly apologize because I had the wrong team's name with the right mascot picture last week. Um, I was confused why they were called the Toros because I was like, that doesn't make any sense. But I thought I had double checked. I was wrong. Um, they're the Harry Sea Eagles. So that picture <laughs> of the team 
where they, you know, uh, photoshopped everybody in there and they have that hairy cell in the middle. That's their team. <laughs> and they are very awesome. So um, I apologize. I've been messing up the University of California. Um, sorry, California State University's two sister schools this whole season. And I am so sorry. <laughs> It is in a spreadsheet and your names are so close that they end up putting you right on top of each other and it tricks my eye. So I'm it's really a, sorry about that, but you all are doing great. So it's continue. okay, Coach Gill. It's okay. You're recovering from an injury. Yes, I did have a head injury. So, yeah, that so is, that's why. <laughs> understandable. It's okay. Thank Glad you. to have you on the field. Yes. <laughs> a little handicap here. Um, so <laughs> this is the trophy. All Whoa. right. Yeah. And can I have the trophy? No. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Aaron. Your team didn't make it. Mine didn't either. I really wanted the trophy, but you know, it's going to go to a great team, uh, whoever that may be. That um, so the team's name is going to be up here. Okay. It's a real frosted slide. Yes. Yes. <laughs> And you'll have the date up there too, 2022. Woo, Cell Bowl 2022, established in 2021. So you all will receive the first ever actual Cell Bowl trophy, our first year um, since it was a rapidly evolving um, competition and event. Uh, ASCP didn't have it in their budget last year. So there was a beautiful still trophy, but it wasn't this one. Um, so you all will be the first to receive the actual cell bowl trophy. Uh, so we're really excited about that because we plan for it. You've seen a lot of difference between the first season and this season, and it's all because of your feedback. So again, please make sure that you fill out those feedback surveys. I'm going to keep plugging survey. that. Yes. Take the survey, please. All right. So in the semifinals in week six to decide who is going to make it to the Super Cell Bowl and get this beautiful trophy. UConn. We've got UConn, the Husky Pride. Then we've got the Bearcats. Dun, 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 dun. And Rah. then <laughs> I still want to see that Bearcat. Um, the Southeast Community College storm oh it might be a perfect storm and they might win it might it might you never yeah. know that looks like a fierce team you know um almost harry potterish um well, so don't go using Twister. your magic you pick up the dogs and the, the bear cat and just yeah um, the trophy. don't go using your wands and all that magic we've got to make sure that you're keeping it fair <laughs> All right, so this is last year's um, episode. So great, great job, by the way, everybody. Um, this is last year's um, uh, tutorial slide. We were talking about the normal maturation in healthy adults of the uh, monocytes and macrophages, the white blood cells. And as we talked about last year, monocytes are just cell sleeping, really, because their whole idea and job and uh, purpose is to make it to the tissues um, to become macrophages where they take out cells um, that don't look right anymore and to keep us healthy with, um, you know, being airport security through the spleen and the liver and watching all the cells that go by. Um, so that includes taking out red cells that are about to, you know, they're geriatric, they're about to um, go to the farm the, the seasoned <laughs> red cells yeah the season seasoned red yes. cells okay they don't have paprika <laughs> or anything like that on them they're about to get paprika <laughs> <laughs> they he are yeah. <laughs> they're gonna look really good to those macrophages and they're mm -hmm. gonna say you look yummy let me help you out here literally yeah, yummy, help yummy, you yummy. out <laughs> <laughs> you have that long lasting hug that ends up you know being that's what friends a, are for yeah <laughs> eternal loving hug um yeah. oh my gosh we're terrible okay so yes they are resting uh macrophages so they go they end up going to um the different uh, tissues to make sure that we stay healthy. And uh, chemotaxis can also call them into the tissues if there is a um, 
a known non-self threat that has then uh, come into your body. So that could be because of a uh, high deposition of LDL cholesterol and that causing problems with your um, vascular uh, tissues, um, sorry, vascularity or your tissues, and they become foam cells because they try to eat them up and then they die and then they make the, a plaque and um, that's arthrosclerosis. And that's why we might end up having um, a situation with heart disease and all that. Um, or a heart attack, AMI. Uh, we also have, if you received an injury and you got um, bacteria that uh, has then become uh, invasive into your tissues, they come and help out with that. There's so many different ways uh, that macrophages um, get excited and start working. Okay, so we see monocytes in the blood, but macrophages are in the tissues. Okay, so just wanted to make that distinction. Um, Carlo, was there anything you wanted to add here? This was last year's. Yeah. Well, um, you know, like, like you mentioned that macrophages are also in the tissue. So there's also organ specific macrophages, like the copper cells, alveolar macrophages. Um, so you might see them everywhere, not just in blood, but also in tissues and body fluids. Yeah. So thank you for that. Um, that's very, very true. There are ones that stay there and that's, that's their main duty. All right. Come on slide. All right. So. I'm going to give just a rundown of um, what this whole slide is all about. And then Carlo is going to take it away and do specifics within um, within the uh, slide itself. So just looking here, we're looking at monocyte disorders this time. Um, what I do want to note is that we're sticking with acute myelogenous um leukemia this time. Um, there are lots of different situations where you might have a monocyte disorder, but this is where our focus is. We can't always have them <laughs> all on one poster here. We started talking about AMLs last week with uh, Catherine Go Lab. And Go Lab. <laughs> that was with uh, the granulocytes and granulocytic disorders. So we're kind of having some um, recurrent information that we discussed last time, last week. And the main part about that is that uh, we don't have the French, American, British classification anymore. And it definitely is not on the ASCP Board of Certification exam. However, when you all are learning, um, it's good to learn the history of how the different cells have been classified so that way you can make the connections of where we are now and why we're where we are now. Okay, so they're highlighted here um, just to hopefully give you a helpful reference. A lot of textbooks still include it just as a reference as well, um, but uh, as we said last week, the French American British classification was mainly about what cells looked like. Okay, there was staining also. Um, that was used and you will see staining here too. But now when we talk about uh, the WHO classification, the World Health Organization classification, we're looking more into genetic abnormalities and um, other types of testing as we discussed last week. All right, so with these, um, uh, with these two that um, deal with monocytes. We've got acute myelomonocytic leukemia. Last, um, it was previously M4 in the FAB classification, and we have acute monoblastic and monocytic leukemia, which used to be um, M5, and that's broken into M5A and M5B um, due to the uh, maturation of the cells that were involved. So we are no longer um, dealing with that. But if you look at how they were classified in the WHO classification, um, they kind of have a hard time fitting into the WHO classification because only the acute monoblastic and monocytic leukemia has a recurrent genetic abnormality. And that has been a very strong basis for the WHO classifications. So as Catherine was talking about last week, 
this is the, I want to see if I can put, oh, it's right here. Um, acute myeloid leukemia, not otherwise specified as the main group that we're talking about, which gets broken down into these two, um, the ones that are dealing with monocytes. Okay. So um, Carlo is going to go into all of that. And as you can see, we have a representation of both of those. Um, when you look, you're looking at the um, the cellular antigens uh, known as, are no, known as the cluster of differentiation uh, proteins that are on the cell membranes of these different cells. Uh, so if you're doing flow cytometry, you're looking for CD markers. Um, and uh, in here, uh, there is a comparison between the peripheral blood and the bone marrow. And I do have a picture of one, uh, uh, just one for each of the two classifications we're talking about today. So we have an acute myelomonocytic leukemia down here in the peripheral blood. But over here, this is a bone marrow of a two-year-old uh, female patient who is having a relapse. And uh, with hers, it's acute monoblastic and monocytic leukemia. But this is a bone marrow. Doesn't this look like a peripheral blood? <laughs> It does look like a peripheral blood. Yeah, but it's a bone marrow. So we're going to talk about why it looks like that as we're going through. So let's go ahead and look at this. So again, um, acute myelogenous leukemia and our new classification is acute myeloid leukemia, not otherwise specified because there's a whole long list of who classification. Yeah. We're going to talk about um, what all of those means, what we're looking for, the um, the laboratory results, then what does the peripheral blood smear look like and what does the bone marrow look like? And um, so again, I have listed FAB4 and um, FAB M5, but again, they are not talked about in this way. I'm probably going to go back and actually change this verbiage here. So just because we're in this um, recording, I haven't changed it yet, but these names are going to be right here. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and start, Carlo. All right. Um, AML or acute myelogenous leukemia. Um, it's important to, to, also emphasize between FAB and the WHO um, that this classification changed not to make our lives difficult, but it's also towards what we have been talking about earlier, the patient-centered medicine, right? Because these findings of mutations and the cellular markers help us not just to characterize the cell, but identify the mutations that will be used as prognostic markers and um, to direct therapy as well. So this is why there's a lot of them. The, the NOS, there's a whole lot of them and the recurrent genetic abnormalities. Um, as mentioned here, FAB classification is based on the staining property and morphology and the cytochemistry. Um, and WHO now includes more genetic uh, mutations. And it's it's nice uh, to know also that the, if, if you guys haven't heard that the most recent WHO classification, uh, 2022 publication, uh, has mentioned the um, the clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential. It's the first time it has arrived in there. So previous thought, we had MDS will accelerate to AML. And now CHIP is pre-pre-leukemia, or, or at least we're starting to know um, what the role of those CHIPs are. So um, the prowess of molecular me molecular diagnostics has uh, rapidly changed leukemia and for the benefit of, of not not just in the laboratory, but for the patients. Um, and that's that's a nice thing to learn. Um, AML um, has a high, typically has a hypercellular bone marrow. The total WBC count is, is variable, could be normal, could be increased or decreased. Uh, but the hypercellular bone marrow that the magic number to call acute leukemia is greater than 20% blasts. But there's always you know, an exception to the rule. There's, there's some leukemias that have a, a certain mutation that they don't have to have, they don't have to satisfy the 20% the rule. Like one of those is AML translocation 821 with the Harlequin cells, uh, those, those granulocytes with two granules, the eosinophil and basophil at the same time 
those they do not have to satisfy the 20% rule, but for the most part, 20%. Um, anemia, thrombocytopenia, and neutropenia all is seen and typically seen in AML, um, maybe because of the hyperplasia that is happening of the clonal, uh, the clone that is affected, or or maybe as a consequence of chemo. But in outside of chemo, maybe it's a hyperplasia of the clone. So typical chemistry markers, you'll see hyperuricemia from cell turnover. I don't know about you guys, but I always, you know, get asked like, why is hyperuricemia evident? Like I always have to come back there. What is uric acid, right? Like end product of purine catabolism. So, and when do you find those? Nucleus. So when there's a lot of destruction of, of cells that are nucleated, you'll see hyperuricemia. And hyperphosphatemia is based on, um, the increased bone fragility or bone uh, bone resorption because of increased cell lysis and hypocalcemia because of the bone resorption in AML. So we mentioned earlier about the N AML NOS, which is a larger category of, of um, WHO classification. Those are the ones that, so basically, if you guys are thinking about it, think of, of AML classifications with WHO as those with recurrent genetic abnormalities, and then pff, NOS. Anything outside that is NOS. Um, why is that Why is that classification variable? Or, or why is that separate as, as compared to FAB? You know, we have M0, M1, M2, M3. The reason for that is the direction of therapy. The, with the dose with recurrent genetic mutations, if we know those genetic mutations, we know the prognostic marker or the approach to therapy. The AML NOS could still be the same approach on the um, chemotherapy that they will have. So it's 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 all um, it's all about what the patient should be achieving in, in in these classifications. So in the pictures below, or I will get there later. Um, so going up on the particular slide, <laughs> I'll I'll talk about them. Later. Um, so these two um, acute myeloma monocytic and monoblastic monocytic leukemia, the M4 and M5 um, classifications. Um, in, in the M4, you see it here, uh, neutrophilic cells greater than 20%, uh, monocytic also, and you see predominance of myeloid and monocytic um, uh, clones, and it's positive in flow with 13 and 33. So if you guys... Um, are reviewing or trying to memorize CD markers, these two are the good myeloid markers, 1333. And in monocytic, we have 14, 4, um, which is typically uh, uh, CD, uh, CD4 T lymphocytes, uh, 11, 11, and 64. What I do remember with monocytes is CD14. It's usually CD14 in all phases of maturation or in all mature monocytes in circulation. Um, myeloperoxidase, a uh, myeloperoxidase blast of myelomonocytic is greater than 3%. Um, so just because there is a heterogeneity in this type of leukemia with a, acute myelomonocytic, so you'll see uh, cells reacting with myeloperoxidase. Um, and it's weak with specific esterase, but I remember mono, uh, monocytic or monoblastic, always positive with NSE, uh, NSE stain, special stain. Um, there's non-specific cytogenic changes, but also the, the presentation of, of leukemia right now could be variable, right? Um, and, and, and we're learning more and more about the evolution of, of leukemia and cancer biology. So all these cytogenetic changes uh, may not be a restrictive or restriction, and it could, it could present with another uh, thing later on. Um, the monoblastic and monocytic leukemia, we have the recurrent genetic abnormality, 911, um, and it could be monoblastic or monocytic. And this is kind of touchy in, in when, when learning the FAB classification and comparing it to the WHO, just because of the progression of mono, uh, monocytic lineage. There's only three, monoblast, promono, and mono, and then psh, macrophage, right? Uh, the The... Learning the difference between monoblast and promonocyte is is touchy and, and it's a big question mark all the time. Um, and on top of that, monocytes are always confused with, with a lot of cells. So we'll talk about that later. But but with the M5, uh, because of 
when when we're looking at M5 or FAB classification, think about NSA positive um, for M5 types of leukemia. Um, and there's extra uh, in clinical presentations with M5, they typically uh, have extra medullary presentation, uh, the cutaneous and gingival infiltration that leads to bleeding disorders. Um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, some dentist offices would always start leukemia screening with uh, with the gums. And, and that's because of the gingival infiltration of monoblastic or monocytic types of leukemia. Going to the peripheral blood smear. So we, we see um, the F FABM4 and FABM5, um, the immature uh, myeloid myeloid and monocytic with M4. And in M5, you have the monos, monoblasts, promonocytes, and monocytes. If we could look at the picture to the left, the slides. We'll I just see. want to say again, I'm going to change these names. Okay. Um, okay. So please make sure you remember that this is myelomonocytic and this is monoblastic and monocytic. All right. So um, again, I'm sorry. I thought I caught all that and I did not. <laughs> So the peripheral blood smear is this one over here. And the bone marrow to the right. Yes. So with the peripheral blood smear, how, so the main question here is, how do you recognize uh, the myelom, uh, the monocytic in, uh, monocytes in blood smear and uh, in, in bone marrow or distinguishing monoblasts, promonocytes, and monocytes? So let's go back to the mature one, the monocytes. Um, most of us learn the definition of it as the ground glass appearance. And for the longest time, I don't know what ground glass looked like. I didn't either. <laughs> yeah. I mentioned that last year. <laughs> I, just, I just had it in my head that what is ground glass? Yeah. Like, I don't know what it means, but I'm memorizing it and I'm associating it with, with, with monocytes. But if for those who are listening, that's a disservice to yourself because yeah. you're only memorizing to remember. You're not knowing how to characterize the cell. So over the years in hematology and in the laboratory, I just learned how to define it. And I define monocytes as, if you look intently, this brain-like convolutions in the nucleus. Um, so I always, uh, you know, if you look intently, you'll see folding in there, like a brain-like convolution. And... And that's how I would distinct, uh, distinguish a monocyte. Um, and, you know, in comparison to a lymphocyte, how do we make them compare them? Uh, lymphocytes might have a weird morphology, but when they're big like monocytes, they have re call, uh, reactive or, or uh, basophilic edges on their cytoplasm. Um, so it's a, the big difference with monocytes. Uh, the monoblast, um, and promonocyte are the ones that are um, kind of confusing when you're re reviewing it in the bone marrow or in the peripheral blood. Um, fortunately, those are two rare things to find um, with the, with promonocytes. It's very rare, maybe because it's a faster transition from the bone marrow to peripheral blood, or it, it's short lived. Um, and, and that's what I, I gathered when you know over the years of looking at promono and monoblast. But what I do know is in the two those two cells, the monoblasts and promonocyte. The monoblast, a typical presentation of a blast, the, the high NC ratio and a smooth chromatin, smooth enough that you could see the nucleoli. I always I always kind of think of it as a lighter curtain compared to a dark curtain, <laughs> dark curtain. Yeah. Um, the, the chromatin, because if it's lighter or thinner curtain, you can see inside. Um, chromatin that is dark, uh, sorry, curtain that's dark, you can't see inside anymore. So with monoblast, the chromatin is thin enough that you could still see nucleoli and more than two nucleoli would be present with the blast. The difference between monoblast to other blasts, um, but I don't want you guys to keep calling monoblast monoblast, <laughs> but the, the, the thing, uh, one distinguishing characteristic of monoblast in comparison to other blasts is that there's more cytoplasm in a monoblast. And, and the, of course, the classical nuclear folding already happens in the monoblast. In promonocyte, um, it's, it's the, the nuclear folds become evident. And 
I like to call it the, the brain-like convolution, and some people call it the tissue-like folding, a tissue fold, tissue folded um, nuclei, and 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 that's the difference between uh, pro mono and uh, monoblast, with with pro monocyte having more um, cytoplasm, of course, and a little bit smaller than a monoblast, and uh, monocyte is you know lighter cytoplasm and in, in activated states you might see va uh, vacuolization they rarely um they will see granules or or at all but an activated macrophage you'll see um or activated monocyte you'll see um sorry uh vacuolization so um to make you guys some of you guys feel better does it uh <laughs> what's the difference between pro mono and monoblast will there be a difference in an approach to treatment uh they treat those the same, right? But it's it's in, in large amounts that that you'll have to identify or distinguish between both. Um, use your resources and characterize the cell that you're looking at. Don't don't rely on memorization. If you're confused, characterize the cell. That's that's my biggest tip for everyone. You know, learn how what what Professor uh, Medlab Lady Gill tells you. The NC ratio, the nucleus, the cytoplasm, characterize them because sticking to memorization will not help you identify when it's abnormal, right? Because you think about it, it's just like you, us, taking a selfie. We look better here than here, but it's the same cell, right? Yeah. So it's the same thing. <laughs> um, we don't look nicer here and better here. And that's the same thing with cells. So um so that next part uh i just uh, want to touch on the ground glass thing because yeah. i know we did cover it last year but i just want to make sure everybody understands what it truly means because i was with carlo i was like what the heck is ground glass and so glass is actually um molten sand right and what you end up having is in a ground glass situation, it's as if you had a piece of glass that was not completely molten and you've got grain, graininess. So it looks like it's translucent, but the graininess makes it so you can't see all the way through. So it makes it a little opaque. So the, the blue, the light blue that you see, if it looks grainy, like if you put it up to the light, which you are, you're putting it up to the light because the um, bright, the the bright field microscope is sending white light through here. So it looks like if I stretch it out, I might be able to see it, but all those, that graininess is in the way. Whereas, um, you know, lymphocytes are more smooth and they don't look as they, though they have this graininess. So if you really are memorizing the ground glass, I was just like, oh, well, I don't know what that means, but I'll go with the color. So I was going with the yeah. color. And I was always going with the, the chromatin looking darker in the lymphocytes because it's more clumped than in the monocytes. Um, but as you were saying, when you get to, um, you know, activated cells uh, like reactive lymphocytes, that becomes a little more strange and harder to harder to deal with. So I want to point out that one of our guests that didn't actually make it to the show um but she has a um she has a uh youtube channel called differential discussions so melissa norfolk uh she's a friend of mine we're on the uh, hematology boc exam committee together um I think she's a specialist in hematology as well. She's really amazing. And she's got really good videos that I've shared on my channel as well that have to deal with the difference between the monocytes and the reactive lymphs. And her and her co-host, Dave, they go through and they talk about them and um, they have some fun uh, conversations there too. So if you haven't checked them out before, go check them out. Um, they specifically talk about, um, you know, cells just like we're doing here today. So, uh, thank you, Carlo. Yeah. Again, I'm going to change these, but we were already in presentation mode. Um, so, so sorry. I mean, don't they also describe it as kind of like a lace look like lacy? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and the um the difference between the lymphocytes. So we haven't gotten to lymphocytes. That's like next week. So you're um you know giving us a preview for next week. But when you look at a reactive lymphocyte, the um the the dark basophilia that's around um the the cells that they're hugging and touching. So you know monocytes they don't really touch. They kind of like avoid because they um. They don't have these receptors that they've brought the cell close to yet, but the um, the reactive lymphocytes they do. They're they're cupping the cells because they've got all of these um, proteins that they're making to identify these cells and all these receptors. So that's why the basophilia is so dark around what they're touching because those receptors are protein and they're picking up the stain. So they're, they're actually binding to the outside of the RBCs to see, Hey, do I, do I get rid of this guy or not? Uh, monocytes are a little bit more standoffish. Um, because they're looking for those um, white, sorry, they're looking for the antibodies that the B cells, the plasma cells will have yeah. made, um, which won't happen with them because they're nonspecific. You know, they're the um, inflammation type of situation, whereas T cells are uh, cell mediated uh, immune uh, response. So the, yep. we're it's really going into- a little foreshadowing here. for next week. Yeah. Um, but the yeah. the blueness, uh, the stain is going to gradually dissipate as you're going towards the nucleus from the cytoplasm. Whereas monocytes, it's just a line and it doesn't like gradually uh, decrease. So that was, I'm stealing that from um, Melissa because they did have that discussion in their okay. video um, <laughs> because she tricked Dave. So watch that episode because it's really funny. Dave's like, I called this right off camera and then we get on camera to call it wrong. It was funny. I was wow. laughing. Um, <laughs> sorry, Dave. <laughs> um, but check it out. It's it's really cool. Sorry, back to you, Carlo. Sorry, sorry expert from the uh, bench. Sorry, Carlo. No, you're fine. Um, <laughs> Yeah, with monocytes, you know, like we always think, uh, I, I always was also thought like it's huge cell. It's a big cell. But what's interesting and the function of it is huge, but it moves fast. <laughs> it moves fast um, when it's called upon. Yeah. And, you know, um, in in other um, functions, um, in, in, in the hematology world, a lot of people are looking at, or, or most, the newest platforms at Sysmex, um, looking at, monocyte distribution width as a marker for sepsis um, because of the um, changes or, or or the quick change of monocytes in, in sepsis, um, a sepsis picture. Um, also, you see um, a lot of studies of the use of monocytes as a marker for inflammation, as we mentioned earlier with the heart, um, because, you know, the adipose tissues attract them. Um, they could cause the monocytes to come to them. And that's why it becomes inflammatory as well. So it's 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 all of it. I, I always think of monocyte as the cell that dreams to become a janitor. Because they're all they do is to clean. <laughs> <laughs> and we need them though. Like, you know, very uh, important. janitors and you know are really the the backbone of so many industries, right? Because you do need you do need that cleanup crew uh, to help out. You know, we have biohazard cleanup crews too. And, you know, even sharks are, you know, people think they're so terrible, but they're the cleaning, um, the, the janitors of the sea, actually, you know, and uh, just like wolves are as well. So everybody's like, oh, these apex predators are terrible, but no, you need them to have a healthy ecosystem, just like monocytes. <laughs> yeah, they, they work so hard, their clothes get um, torn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. They're holy. Come on. <laughs> holy. Oh, <laughs> all worn out. Man. <laughs> all worn out. <laughs> But that's, right. that's 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 my contribution. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Were Were you wanting to go anywhere with the bone marrow or no? Um. With the bone marrow, no. Uh, I think. Okay. Uh, you covered a lot of stuff. The um, monoblast important parts. <laughs> the things we haven't said are the hour rods. 
oh. um, being there. Uh, we talked about the fine nuclear chromatin and the uh, nucleoli. So it, you went through already the monoblast versus the promonocytes, and they do they happen so quickly. And I don't think I don't think a lot of us really talk about that maturation really um, a lot. Those two phases it's pretty much just like oh that looks like a blast and oh there's a monocyte nobody ever really seems to talk about the pro monocytes it feels like the you know the middle kid yeah. <laughs> of no, a family you don't talk child about pro myelocytes no no <laughs> um so as i said i'm going to change these i'm really sorry sue she gives me feedback and i thought i caught everything but um i was continuing to see more stuff so um, it's in, it's verbally in there. Um, mm -hmm. you did a great job and I'm really sorry. I didn't awesome. see all that. Always uh, process improvement in the lab. Yes. Even yes. On, on the cell ball field. Always on process the cell improvement. Ball field. It's happening right now. Uh, <laughs> and time is short. <laughs> yes. So it will be fixed. If you ever see this anywhere else, these will be gone and it will say, um, the actual, uh, ones in orange here. Okay. So thank you for that. Um, now we are it's selfie time. Woo woo. So right. selfie, we've got some really great uh, teams here. These are the six that were playing in the playoffs. So I'm going to zoom in here and I do have some questions. Uh, not here yet, um, but we've got University of Connecticut here. They've got a really big team. Um, they're, they're doing some great stuff here again. I don't know which one of you it is, but that backpack is on the line. If you, um, make it past that 21 seconds, make it to that 22nd, uh, and whatever Mark, I'm all right with that. There's our hairy sea eagles, um, over. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's funny, right? It all makes sense. So. Yeah, they're all, they're they're all cut out. And they're all cut out. <laughs> they are. They're all photoshopped on there. I did know their picture. I just kept mixing them up, and I am so sorry, but you all are hilarious. <laughs> like this girl, she's got beautiful hair that turns into different hair because she's photoshopped on somebody else. <laughs> it's really <laughs> fun. And the Harry Cell is one of their teammates. I think it's so funny. Um, then we've got the other um university of uh california here um the irvine training program and um they are just a really good fun group as well we've got msu the beautiful crystals you guys are gorgeous love this picture it looks so so professionally done they and, don't look painful no and they, <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then it looks like this might be a trophy case. Is that where you're putting the cell bowl trophy if you win? Hmm. Um, and then we've got the University of Cincinnati, which we said was like um, the Harry Potter uh, Hogwarts uh, school because of the Beautiful. rotating staircases here. <laughs> you can see in the picture. <laughs> but this is my question. Um, what's the sock for? Uh, you got it hanging up. Are you getting ready for Christmas? You know, Santa Claus coming and filling your stock. I don't know what yeah, this we, is up do, here for. We do stockings in the lab or not but, in the lab, but yeah. But this is their it's cell not. bowl team picture. I don't know it's what's not. happening. Maybe it's just it's, fun. They got freedom like Dobby. I don't know. They were given their sock and now they can go work in the lab after they've been students. At the end, <laughs> they get a sock and they get their freedom. So you all are hilarious. Tell me, please tell me um, in the comments or whatever, what's with the sock? I really want to know. Um, so we get really great comments from all of the faculty that are putting in the sellable scores. And, uh, you know, if you want to just answer that question in there, I'm okay with it. It's just, I'm really intrigued about the sock. I almost made it so that, you know, these... Um, this team was over top of it, but no, can't block out the sock. It's a really good question. Um, so you all are doing great. Congratulations on making it through the playoffs. Round of applause. And yes. Um, thank you, Carlo, for joining us today. 
and um maybe next season we'll have you back or we might see you a little bit earlier we than might. that hmm. i'm not secrets. saying anything hmm. i might <laughs> see you yeah i might chemo tactic chemo is back again <laughs> you'll be so fast so so fast and diapedicing back <laughs> <laughs> Well, we thank you so much for yeah, watching. Thank you, Carlo. I hope thank and thank you for coming. I hope that you all learned a lot today. Um, make sure you go back and look at the tutorials that we did last year and then this year um, combine them together because that's how they're meant to be stacked. Uh, that way you get a basis and then you start to see the abnormal after you know the normal because that's very important. I know everybody gets excited about seeing abnormal stuff even though we know it's not good for the patient but it's a good learning experience and mm -hmm. we want to jump at the ready and help someone out. But if you don't know the normal, you're not going to do well with knowing the abnormal. So make sure you look at season one first. It's the season mm -hmm. in 2021. And uh, if you all enjoyed this, please make sure to like this video and subscribe. And we will hopefully see you in next week's episode where we find out who goes to the super sellable. I can't wait. So thank you all. Um, any last words, guys? Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> all right. Let's have a blast. Yeah, let's have a blast. Bye.